Welcome to Grace at the Fray, a podcast that explores the many dimensions of God's grace that we find at the frayed edges of life. Come explore how God's grace works to renew your life and send you on mission in His kingdom. Hello, beloved. Welcome to episode nine of Grace at the Fray, where we explore God's grace in the frayed edges of life. Well, today my guest is Emily Schrader. She and her family served with Surge overseas for for over a decade, and Emily's now a recruiter with Surge's mobilization team. And and, okay, let me give you a fair warning. If you've been feeling God's call to mission work and you've been ignoring that call, do not, I repeat, do not listen to this episode. This may be the moment where the Holy Spirit grabs you by the scruff of the neck and compels you to go to surge.org slash go and begin a fantastic adventure. Or maybe you want more out of life because you've been longing to be plucked out from under the pile of your existential crisis, and maybe you're drowning in the cultural malaise, the crisis of authority, governments, and religion, and all the institutions that have been letting us down since the pandemic revealed that nothing is what we thought it was. If you want more out of life, keep listening. Because we're going to look at that good old-fashioned Great Commission and see how Jesus' authority reframes all of these existential crises, the malaise or whatever meaninglessness you may be struggling with. Emily is a mover, and she wants to connect you with what God is doing in His kingdom. You ready? Let's go. I really should have worn different contacts because do you want me to read it no i mean i don't know we'll, we'll see but it is funny because i'm like that's that's what i do now at my house i have a little nook mm-hmm. my little chair with all the books around it and everything and i was sitting there and i had a book like <laughs> three inches from my face Lori walks through the living room she's like look at yourself <laughs> i was like what oh <laughs> <laughs> oh, Readers, no. you're going to go mm. down on your nose, you know? Great. Mm-hmm. Great. Yeah. It's time for that. It so. is. For me, too. For me, too. Oh, well. So, who are you? And where are you from? What's going on? We're going to talk about the Great Commission, but I, I, I suppose you should introduce yourself first. Yeah, my name is uh, Emily Schrader, and uh, I am currently working with our organization, Um as a recruiter and in our renewal department. Uh, but before that, my husband and I were fielded um, in, uh, in the secure location uh, for a long time, um, a few terms. Uh, and we just came back to the States recently. Um, and so now we are living uh, in North Carolina where my husband is a chaplain for the Air Force, and I work, uh, I continue to work with Surge remotely, but I love it when I get to come up here, so that's good. Yeah, yeah. I love that you, I mean, how long have you been a recruiter? Just two years. Okay, but I love when we start talking about these things, you get that look in your eye where it's like, I know why you're a recruiter. Yeah. Um, So I'm looking forward to this conversation. Uh, I am a little bit scared that you might recruit me. It's a possibility. It's a possibility. Yeah, so buckle up. Right. Sorry, Lori, wherever you <laughs> are. Where, wherever we're going to end up. <laughs> all, it's probably all the places that we swear we would never go. Well, that, yes, well, that happened to me. So there you go. Right, yeah, so what's your story? <laughs> well, our story is, um, you know, we, we got married. We were both ministry-minded. My husband's a pastor, ordained pastor. Um, we did some uh, inner-city church ministry when we were first married and uh, but while he was in seminary he was really moved towards international mission and I had always kind of just grown up in the church with a heart for mission like but um and it was like a bumpy road all along the way like we thought maybe we'd go to southeast asia and we went and visited and he loved it and I hated it oh. and it was like you know so we went to marriage counseling which is what a lot of people do um and then uh we decided to chill for a bit and then I actually took a course called perspectives on the world christian oh, movement Oh yeah been there done that Yeah and that you know wrecked me What was know. it that wrecked you about it Uh statistics Um uh-huh. Um, I think for me, it was uh, one in three people in the world are Muslim, and one in 12 missionaries go to Muslims. Mm. And I was like, hmm, that doesn't seem right. 
And I think there's a whole bunch of reasons. And if we were talking about, you know, a theology of mission and missiology, we could go down that road. But the fact is, God used that class in that time to really move my heart. And my husband was just like, sweet, when I came home and was like, it's time to go. And he's like, yes, finally. So he got online and looked for reformed sending agencies. And he found uh, World Harvest Mission. And he looked at the, the book list, and he loved the book list. And we called... We had a conversation with my colleague, Dan Matchaw, who I get to work with now right. as a recruiter. But this was like years ago, like a really long time ago. So, so fun. Uh, and then God just kind of took us from there. But for me, like my heart attitude was, all right, Lord, you're calling me to go to the Muslim world, but um, I'm not going to Muslim country. That would be irresponsible to raise children in a Muslim country. I mean, so ridiculous. Here's the deal. Here's the deal, God. Yeah, right. Yeah. I'll do I'll go this far but no further. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And so we did um a site visit to a a, a field that was working uh, in Europe with immigrants. Uh and uh we went there and we thought, yeah, we could totally do this. And then we went to the actual country of the immigrants that they were working with and like immediately when I like stepped off um the transportation, I was like, there's no way I can do this. Oh, really? Uh-huh. And then after being there for 5 days, it, in um, I would say the thing that really moved us both was um, we did a homestay with a family, um, and we were just like, why would we go there when we could be here? Yeah. Like, why would we go there to pound the pavement when we could be here and just be among this people, you know? So you stepped off the taxi or whatever it yeah. was, and you're like, there's no way I can do this. Yeah. You stepped back on the taxi, and you, and you were and like, like, there's no way I cannot do this. That's exactly it. That yeah. was exactly it. It wow. was it was really kind of crazy. The first time when we were looking at going to Southeast Asia, and it was really a, a train wreck. So when we started looking again, there was like a little bit yeah, of yeah, hesitancy yeah. for shy. us, like in our marriage even. like So when people were like, what do you want us to pray for? We were like, just pray for unity. Like, don't pray that like we're going to come or go. Like, just pray that we agree <laughs> on whatever it is. The Lord totally answered that prayer, that we both came to the realization that, oh, it was here um, separately. And then when we sat down together with with the people who ended up being our our teammates and precious friends, um, mm-hmm. that at that moment it was like, oh yeah, yeah, you too. Like, and then the rest was history. It was good. So tell me about what it was like being over there during the pandemic. You quarantined in country. Yeah, we quarantined in yeah. in country, and you know nobody really knew what was coming. Right. Like you're getting news from China and then you're getting news from like, oh, Italy, Italy's a real hot spot, right. you know, and everyone's and we're going like, to cancel oh, school man. for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Like, oh, this could be this could really be a little bit disruptive, you know. And for us, I think the way that that kind of um, manifested was um, because we were in a country where schooling options got more and more limited as as our kids progressed we chose the boarding school option for high school yeah. and so our oldest was actually in boarding school and far um, far away in boarding school well a flight away but it was always for me like there was always a little bit of a, a reassurance that like she's only a flight away um and so it was coming up you know it was like march right so it was coming up on spring break and um our team leader called us and said hey we think you need to get your daughter home to country before things close down we were like, okay. And so we called her, um, and she's older high school age. So we called her, and we talked to her about it. We said, hey, you know, this, this, this could be a couple weeks. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I, have an, I have a friend who was a nurse in January, is a nurse. In January, he was like, we were hanging out. He goes, this is going to change the world. And I was like, whatever, whatever. dude. <laughs> Everybody around him was like, oh my gosh, conspiracy so theory or whatever. <laughs> no, we didn't see sure her again enough. until July. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a long time to be separated from your adolescent kid. It yeah. was not oh part, that gosh. was not part of the deal. You know, yeah. making all these deals with God, that was not part of the deal. And not to mention just seeing things happen around us that were tragic and were really hard and people were suffering. You know, you're, uh, I, I hate to say this, but it's true, and it's something that has always stuck with me as someone who was in the field in a hard place. That your, you know, your blue passport can get you out of there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, if yeah, things yeah, yeah, yeah. get really rough, uh-huh. there's always the eject button. You know, right. you can always there's always that option. Where for, you know, people who live there, that's not an option. Right. And then all of a sudden, that option was taken away. 
Ooh, that's interesting. Now we're all really the same. Now we are all really the same. Now I am truly in we're, his hand. We're in it with you guys. Yeah. Let's there's do no this. yeah, there's no like I'm just I'm just gonna go back to America and ride this out. Like, nope, not happening. I've seen a lot of people be resentful of missionaries because they'll that they'll hold really tightly to that. Yeah. As a, uh, their security, as their hope. Yeah. You know. That's so, not the hope, yeah. Yeah. And so for the Lord to to go, hey, let's let's remove that because that's yeah. preventing a certain kind of intimacy. Oh yeah. Well, you know, not necessarily in your story, but right. in general, this this thing where an American can have an eject button. Yeah. Yeah. We're in it with you. We're here. So what'd yeah. that do? Well, like I said, um, you know, it made me more of a praying person. Hmm especially for my daughter. Like there's this real kind of like release of any sense of control, you know, and it, it's, it's really a, it's kind of a fluke anyway. Like it's, we're not really in control, but right. we have like these ideas that we're in control right. and that, that helps us to function. And so that was taken away. And so it was like, Oh no, really I am entrusting my daughter to you, Lord, no matter what happens. Um, that was super hard. The other thing was that we celebrated Easter that year. And Easter is by far one of my favorite. Mm -hmm. It's my favorite time of year. And mm -hmm. it's my favorite holiday. Yeah. And Happy we Easter, by the way. Yeah, he's risen. Truly. Right? 50 days of celebrating Easter. I'm glad exactly. we got to do that. That makes me so happy. So yeah, so Easter, right? Easter rolls around and we're all in lockdown. And actually, Serge um, put together uh, an Easter service oh, that yeah. we all got to watch together. And I will tell you what, it we watched it. And we wept. My kids, mm. you know, my, my, uh, how, gosh, how old were they then? Um, like my 10 year old and my 15 year old, we, all of us were just weeping, mm. like just really touched by the hope that was, was put out in that, um, presentation. I mean, it was, and, and I got to see Scotty Smith actually, um, who was one of the speakers in that, and he's a pastor down yeah. in, in Nashville. I got to go up to him after and just be like, you just have no idea the impact that that whole thing. I mean, he had all sorts of musicians coming yeah. on. So like Andrew yeah. Peterson, like all these, and, and like my kids were like, Oh my gosh. Cause they're like, Hey, Serge, you know, Andrew Peterson, who my son loves his wing feather soccer, you know, he's like, Hey Serge, I'm just, just letting you know I'm with you, you know? And my, my son was like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe he knows that we're here. That's like, awesome. and you know, it was, yeah, it was really special. I think that there was just this, the sense of, of really clinging to Jesus that we hadn't really experienced before that and, and needing to hope in something <laughs> like, is this ever going to right. stop? Are the borders ever going to open up again? You know, bringing our daughter back to the country, there was a point where we could do that, but it would have meant that she would have had to quarantine in a hotel that the government assigned to her by herself as a 16 year old. Oh, wow. And we were like, absolutely not it's it's too risky so she um she ended up coming back to the states sooner than us and then uh eventually when the borders finally actually the day before the borders opened up we flew out um to go back and be reunited as a family yeah. it was a miracle so wow so in that context out of and out of that you became a recruiter yeah, you know, it's interesting as we've been talking about all this calling business and I've been thinking and reflecting on my own story and really what the pandemic did for a lot of us is we were, um, you know, we got kind of put in a global timeout is what yeah. I like to say, you know, it was like everybody stay in and think about your life. Right. Yeah, like only one person can leave, you know, that, yeah, all that, that business. It was crazy. It was. It was crazy. Um, the one thing that was interesting, I will tell this story quick. One thing that was interesting was, um, you know, you weren't really allowed out and about unless you were shopping. And so what you could do is you could put a, uh, some bread in your in a bag and put it on your bike handle. And my husband, who is a pastor, would go do pastoral visits and people would just think he was going buying bread, buying bread. But he was actually there were some there were some serious crises that went on while we were there. And he was able to go and visit people like, yeah, I mean, it was that's, your but, that's his ticket. That was his ticket. The, the, the bread in the in the, you know, shopping bag. On the bike handle. Nice. Nobody stopped him. Oh, he's getting bread. 
That's legit. Oh, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it was a global timeout. Yep. Everybody has to reevaluate. Disruption, yeah, it leads to reevaluating. And our reevaluation, uh, we were coming up on the cusp of a decision of whether or not, like, staying, staying would have meant recommitting to building something new and it would have meant real another long-term stay and our parents are aging and our kids are starting college and um my husband had this opportunity to uh, pursue the chaplaincy and I've always actually you know I've always had a heart for recruiting it's kind of like in my DNA oh a little yeah bit. like you start talking about it I can't wait for this you're you're it's already starting well, that, I, that twinkle in your eye it's I mean I've been to uh, I've done some things with with our company like before, even when we were on the field, and it's just like, yeah, let me talk to people about yeah. this. I really love it. So, so recruit me. <laughs> <laughs> well, how was the pandemic for you? Well, it, interestingly enough, I was the worship director at a church, and so I I had a blast mm-hmm. making making. I mean, I learned how to film. <laughs> and use cameras and all that stuff right so it was a it was a huge time of creativity for me i was in you know they talk about flow Mm -hmm. i was in a flow state Mm -hmm. that year yeah in the zone Mm -hmm. uh, making uh making worship accessible to to my people so it was yeah it was really good i mean i think it's a great example of of taking the thing that happened during the pandemic to you as an individual and saying like, okay, now, which way am I going to go? What's my direction now? Like I've learned some things. And, um, and I think that we all, if we, if we sit and we really can think about it, like everybody learned some things during the lockdown. Yeah. Um, and some things that we learned were really helpful and have given, and some things we were like, Oh man, um, you know, I'm afraid of dying. Mm, Yeah. Right. Like fear of mortality, huge, it really kicked in, didn't it? Um, you know, I, um, I actually do like being around people. Um, you know, like the people who are sworn introverts, you know, are right, kind of right. like, oh, no, wait, no, I, I yes. could, you know, I could use some people in my life right now. You know, there's, yes. you know, there's some different yeah. things that like we, we learned about ourselves. And it's interesting, like during the, um, the pandemic, uh, our go forms, which is like the form that people who are interested in, what's the word I'm looking exploring. for? Exploring. Yes, thank you. Exploring, um, going with surge somewhere. Um, they get online and they fill out this go form, and it's just very basic. Like, hey, what's your name? Well, you know, where are you from? And what's your interests? Yeah, like, what, yeah. What are you thinking about? Um, and those went way up during, during the pandemic. During the pandemic. Um, especially yeah. with, especially long-term recruiting. Now our long-term recruiting, like we have basically different levels of recruiting. We have short-term teams, we have shorter term, um, experiences, um, that come alongside teams. And then we have our long-term like career missionaries who, um, and we had, a uh, you know, there's not as many people that are saying like, oh yeah, sign me up to, you know, pack up my life and family and move to another country, you know, until God says, come do something else like yeah um so but those went up and it yeah. was really amazing but our numbers didn't go up yeah when this moment that starts to uh cause everyone to rethink their lives mm-hmm. happens it's not like everyone in the world filled out went searching for a go form no. but there are certain people there is a lot there were a lot of people uh, filling that thing out more and than usual. Let's let's sit back and just observe that. Mm-hmm. And if I was talking to that person, I would say, mm-hmm. "Oh, th- that's an interesting thing." Yeah. Did you notice that you did that? Yeah. Um, that's. Did you notice that a lot of people didn't feel that that was where the Lord was calling them? Right. In this moment where we're all reevaluating our lives, what yeah. am I doing with my life? Right. Um, and so many people shifted. Yeah. So 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 many people. Right. Like I don't. I don't have to do this anymore. Right. You know, uh, the great resignation is, it's yeah. not a great resignation. Right. It wasn't a great resignation. It was a great realization. Right. Where, well, potential uh, people who want to go on the field are like, well, maybe, maybe that little voice somewhere back there, maybe I should pay attention to that a little bit more. So yeah. So they fill out a go for them. Because yeah. they're not comfortable. Because they're not, well, you know, whatever it is. Whatever it is. Um, because God is calling them. Mm-hmm. Like, 
Well, but here's the thing. Here's here's the thing about it. The floodgates open. Yeah. And income people and income appointments and income work schedules and income, you know, all the things that were taken away from us for this, you know, substantial amount of time come flooding back in and they interrupt whatever it was that was happening. And that for me is like so sad. Mm -hmm. yeah. What is it that's keeping us from that cur that curiosity that was peaked during that time of, you know, forced introspection or whatever is, 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 it's getting, we're losing it. We're losing the window. Yeah. And I'm like, let's not lose the window. Let's stop and think about this. Yeah. And one of the ways I think we can do that is by actually looking at the Great Commission. Yeah, I was, I was thinking about how the, the curiosity that would have needed to, to turn into a courage. There mm -hmm. is a moment where courage kicks in. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't have to anymore because things were opening up again. Well, that, that courage comes from somewhere. Mm -hmm. All right, enter in the authority of Christ mm -hmm. in the Great Commission. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah. yeah. So what does that look like? Well, it's funny because, um, you know, as a recruiter, um, you know, we think a lot as recruiters in general. And, and actually, I, I like to also say that we're mobilizers. We're not just recruiters. Like, you know, well, it's not the recruiting team. It's the mobilization team. It is the mobilization team. Yeah. And, uh, and so as I've been thinking about that, one of the things, like we just talk about, you know, who we're recruiting or mobilizing and how, how do we do that and how do we connect with people? And so, you know, there's a lot of talk about Gen Z millennials, Gen Z, like this is the, this is the demographic more now that we're working with. And so one of the assignments that, um, or one of the ideas that went out there was like, Hey, somebody rewrite the great commission for Gen Z. Right. And I was like, all right, well, I'll take a stab at Did it. Did you ask G chat GPT to do that? No, no. We should totally ask chat GPT to do that. Yeah. Okay. Well, continue. No. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I get, I sit down and I'm thinking, cause we've done a lot of reading, we've done a lot of talking and listening about who Gen Z is and you know, what motivates them and, you know, mentoring and all these sorts of things. Right. And I'm like, okay, rewrite the great commission. And so I'm reading the great commission. I'm reading it in different versions, like all this kind of stuff. And it just kind of hit me, like, you can't rewrite the Great Commission. <laughs> like, it kind of says what it says. Right. Right? <laughs> yeah. I was like, but you can think about it. And you can interpret it. And you can um, apply it to your life yeah. today. Yeah. So that's the big question. How do you apply the Great Commission to a post-pandemic world? Yes. Yes. How do you do that? Because I think that the switch that happens when everything started opening up again is that um, people became more risk averse. They were kind of, it's like a, it's like a baby, right? You have like this baby and this baby is like out of its swaddle and it's, it's just kind of like kicking and it's, and it's looking around and it's like, it's, it's, and then all of a sudden like the swaddle comes back and you, you know, you pop a pacifier in and it's like, oh yeah, I'm comfy. I like yeah. this, yeah. but maybe it doesn't learn to crawl as fast. Like he maybe doesn't turn over like as soon. Like there's this idea of like, no, let's try not to let go of what was happening in our hearts. Let's not be lulled back into this sense of, of security and comfort that comes from what we know. Mm -hmm. And let's remember that, no, God was like, God was, he was doing something in my heart yeah, and in my mind. And, but what he was doing, it, it means it's risky. And it's the risk part that I think I really love to talk about. And I think that the Great Commission really helps us to understand the risk more and, um, and, and really informs us and gives us faith to take the risk. Yeah. Here's the real thing about the Great Commission is that people think it's for everyone else. <laughs> right. And, right. And that's, you know, um, that's a hard one. Like Jesus, this wasn't like a Jesus with the three you know, this wasn't Jesus like huddled up with his best buds saying, yeah. Hey guys, a little secret, this keep this hush hush. It wasn't even like with the 12, you know, this was like the last thing he said before he ascended to heaven. Right. Right. So that in and of itself is like, well, maybe we should pay attention. 
to this thing. This these these this is what he left us with. Um, uh, with his and when he finished his earthly, you know, time, like okay, right. Let's 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 look at it. Right. Let's think about it. Well, I want to read Eugene Peterson's version of this. I want you to tell me what you think about all this. Yeah, yeah. All okay. Right? So Jesus, undeterred, went right ahead and gave his charge. God authorized and commanded me to commission you. Go out and train everyone you meet far and near in this way of life, marking them by baptism in the threefold name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Then instruct them in the practice of all I've commanded you. I'll be with you as you do this, day after day after day, right up to the end of the age. Right. <laughs> drop mic the drop. mic. <laughs> Jesus drops the mic, and there he goes, right? And we're all like, okay, what? What does that mean? And here's the thing is that I was looking at a bunch of different translations Mm -hmm. of the Great Commission. And, you know, um, the message one really did stand out to me because I think that it it took it um, and it made it feel a little bit more accessible today because I think we've read it so many times in the more traditional translations. Yeah, like what I just did from memory. Yeah, exactly. Like everyone said, oh yeah, I know what the Great Commission is. But like Eugene Peterson's, um, you know, his his translation, it, it, it kind of, it put some caveats in that maybe we wouldn't think about if we just read it the other way. Right. The first thing about it that I think is really important, um, it's important in my life daily, actually, is to remember like ac- the actual authority of Jesus and what that is. And I think sometimes we think we skip ahead to like um, what the command is before um, looking at like what Jesus actually says about himself before he gives the command, right? And so there's this idea, like all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. That's what he says. And he doesn't say like, well, I've been given you, I've been given authority today to talk to you about this thing. Or he doesn't say like, I've been given some authority um, in the realm of this, this, and this, you know? He says, no. All authority has been given to me and heaven and earth. And then I start thinking about like, okay, well, what is his authority? Like, what does that mean? Because I think that you can miss like the richness of what he's saying if you don't like reflect on what's just happened over the past three years before his ascension, right? right? Like, what are some of the things that he, he showed his authority over? I mean, I love it. I love, like, the Gospel of Mark. It's just all about Jesus' authority, yeah. right? And it starts out, like, his authority over nature, his authority over demons, his authority over um, creation, nature and creation, but, like, when he's, you know, calming storms, like, peace be still, you know? Right. Like, yep. you know, his authority over death. Yeah. Like, so he, or, over sickness, like healing, like just like this amazing authority that he had when he was here on earth. It's mind blowing. Right. It's not like the authority that your principal has. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? So what are the implications of that for, for going? Because he starts with all authority. Yeah. Well, the implications are like the first question is, is have you given him authority? Mm. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I mean, I think that, like, in my Are own, we recognizing that authority? Yeah. Nature does. Right? Yeah. The demons do. Yeah. Like, hmm. so, so, yeah. So, who has authority in my life? And how do I even feel about authority? Like, maybe we have a chip on our shoulder about authority. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, it's another thing that the pandemic did. Put us in a crisis of authority. Yeah. Where you we really You can't tell are, me what to do. Exactly. We're, we really are left to fend for ourselves when it comes to authority nowadays. Yeah. The way that the secular world offers good news, Uh this is their good news. They say, hey, you are your own authority. Isn't that cool? And everyone's like, initially, I mean, even my own heart goes, goes, that is the best. I'm awesome. Yeah, I'm (laughs) awesome. Yeah, all authority is in mine. And then moments later, when I have to like figure that out. Yeah. When I have to actually bring goodness and mercy into the world, all all my authority, if if all authority was given to me, <laughs> which we're just living in a world where we're yeah. trying to figure that out, I I don't know what to do, yeah. and so it's actually not good news. It's not that that we are our own authority. No. It's not good news that we are in a crisis of authority. Right. And so 
we, but at the same time, we don't want to acknowledge that Jesus has all authority uh-huh. over nature, over demons, over my own heart, because we're afraid of being duped. Because right. we've been duped everywhere. Well, that's just it. Like, there's a double-edged sword because it's like our, us being the boss, right? Well, that doesn't work. But if we put our, our hope and faith in earthly authorities, well, they're abusive. Right. Um, not all. I mean, there's a system of authority that God's put in place. Parents over children. Like, you know, like there's there's good, but they are they are broken. And our suspicion is off the charts nowadays. Yes. Absolutely. And, but Jesus, his authority is perfect and powerful and epic. Like that's the word that's I like to word talk you, about. That's yeah, the word yeah. I use when I talk about Jesus, because it's epic authority. Like this is this is not an authority that it's it's a it's above and beyond everything else that you would even think about. And so the real question that I ask in as I've been thinking about this is like, do I submit myself to the epic authority of Jesus? So if I do submit myself to that, then I go on to like what he says. All authority has been given. So there's this command that follows that, right? And what's right. the command? Go. Go. Go out. Not yeah, how does he stay in? And this is this is the one that I, I think this is hilarious. And maybe I'm dating myself, but I have kids and I do love a good kids movie and the movie Home, like um and you mm-hmm. know, Steve Martin. Is yeah. he not like brilliant in that? He's a genius. But there's this scene where O is in the freezer of like a seven eleven and Tip, the little girl, is has him locked in there because she's terrified because she's yeah, just yeah, met yeah, him, yeah. you know? And they're talking to each other and he says to her, like um, can I come into the out now? You know? And she's like, no. And, um, but it always cracked me up. Like, can I come into the out now? Going into the out. Yeah, going into the out. Now, I think that that is a really great picture of what Jesus is saying in this Great Commission. Get outside of yourself. Yeah. Go into the out. Yes, go into the out. And what does that mean? Like, does that mean, uh, and this is where I say, like, okay, if you ask me what that means... Like, I might be compelled to say, well, you know, there's a media center working in Europe right now that is developing um, all sorts of things for um, the Muslim world. And so they're working, they're they're taking and they're interviewing actual, um, you know, Muslim background believers, and they're creating content that's really effective in bringing people to, to Christ. Mm. And they could really use someone with your skills, Jim. Oh, interesting. You know, to, uh, to do that. They could, you know. And, you know, it could be like, uh, you could just go and visit and see what they're doing and see if there's any way that your experience with all of this production and things, if, if you could help with that and maybe like go back and forth a bit or you know, maybe, maybe you could just go there. I don't know. Right. Like what, what might God be doing in you now? Yeah. Now I'm going to get in trouble because Serge has asked you to do this podcast. <laughs> So, well, what prevents me from doing the podcast over there, right? right. Well, exactly. We'll see, that's what rem- <laughs> we can thank the pandemic for that too, right? Yeah, because yeah. I work in North Carolina now. Exactly. And I, like, there's, exactly. there's lots of good things that came from and, and that's one of a thousand opportunities Uh-oh. that you get to see. And so mobilizing means you see a need, you see an opportunity, and you see uh, someone who has gotten the nudge mm-hmm. and... And because of the authority of Christ has been given enough courage to follow him mm-hmm. into the next step of, hey, so what What could that look like? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh, you know, I'm scared, but... Right. You know, well, scared and, and courage kind of go together. Well, yeah. I mean, you can't... Yeah, you don't have one without the other. Why do you need courage if something's not scary? Right. <laughs> like, or if something's not risky, you would need courage. And so there's this idea... As you keep reading the Great Commission, you know, he says to go out. And, you know, for, like I said, you know, for some of us, that might mean going out into the world, into the the world, like to the nations. Um, for some people, it might mean, like, go out of your dorm room, okay? Go out of of your um, your office. Go out um, of your front door. Yeah, go out of your phone. Go out. Oh. No, you're meddling. Oh. Right? 
<laughs> no, I, I, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, seriously. I mean, maybe that one. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I'm serious. Like absolutely go out of your phone, but, but move, mm-hmm. you know, move and move with the intent of bringing the light of Jesus with you wherever you're going. And, you know, he's specific to say it's, it's baptizing and it's teaching people his way. And so just to say like, that's, that's the command. And that is like, go and be an ambassador for Jesus. Yeah. But this authority piece, like we have to come back around to it because here's the kicker. And it's that like, and how does he end this command? He says, I'll be with you. Right. And I'll be with you as you do this day after day after day. Yeah. Right. So good. It is so good. Yeah. Like this isn't just a command for one big, it's not an epic command for an epic moment. It's an epic authority, but it's an everyday command for yeah. every day. And this is this is participation. Yes. This is come do this with me. Yes. Come and be with me. The way I like to think about that is like my daughter, you know, we were living overseas. Uh, she was in local school systems and in an international. There's just not as much opportunity there to do some things. And so when we came back to the States, one of the things that she did was she joined the basketball team never played basketball in her life. She started playing and she really hated games because games were just so stressful. Um, She'd go out there. She didn't really know all the rules super well. It was like all these people were watching and it was her and she would get the basketball and she would throw it really fast again. Like she would, she would get it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and it was like, Um, (laughs) but she always loved practice. And when she would come home from practice and she would say, you know what I love about practice is that our coaches play with us. Hmm. So our coaches are on the, the, the floor, you know, they're on the court with us and they're, and they're playing with us and they're teaching us as they go and they're shooting and they're passing and they're, you know, and she's like, it's so fun. Instead of having the coach on the sideline yelling things with all this pressure, oh, it's, that's like, so good. it's like there, she's like, it's so much more enjoyable for me in learning this game and taking this risk. But she did it and she was like, that's, that's the most fun for me. And I thought about that. I thought, man, isn't that just what Jesus is doing Absolutely. with Absolutely. He's inviting us, like, yeah, come on, let's go. Let's get in the game here. Yeah. But I'm not going to stand on the sidelines yelling at you, like, you should have cut this way. Make the shot next right. time. This is a totally different game. Okay, it's Easter. Yeah. And Christ is risen. Mm. And, and that changed the game. Yeah. So what life is like yeah. is like that practice. Right. Like, but that's the game. Right. The game is we are with him day after day right after day life is play now that he is because he is risen indeed yeah life is is play and this idea too that our coach right is our advocate hmm. our commander is our advocate is our defender yeah and that jesus has the authority to forgive us yeah because of what he's done right and so now we don't just we don't have to go in with this fear of failure. Yeah. Because we have Jesus. He's made a way for us. And even when we stumble there's a song Need to Breathe says, um, just because we follow the light doesn't doesn't mean we make it every time. Mm. Or something like that. I don't know. We can look at it. But it's like this idea that like we don't have to be perfect or perform in a perfect way. That no, Jesus is with us and his authority, his epic authority is what gives us the courage yeah. to move forward because he's not there waiting to like come down with a hammer Absolutely. the minute we you know misstep or or doubt or fear or anything. No, he's right there like, all right. Yeah. Let's 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 move this way. Let's do this, you know. And it's like, oh, that's different. Yeah, his authority is so victorious that it's victorious even over every mess up, even over every go form that got filled out and nothing happened after that. Right. God's grace is sufficient for those things, and His joy is undaunted. Right. And and His kingdom is moving forward, regardless. Right. Don't you want to participate with a God? Like, like that. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what are what are some of the opportunities that you see? For us, with us. Oh, yeah, yeah, with, with Surge, with Yeah. What are some of the things that you see? I mean, you already said uh, what's happening in Europe with a media team, which is you you just, you just went like bink, you know, and you just threw that out there. Well you told uh, me to recruit you. Well, it's you're doing a good job. Oh well, thank you. Um, um. <laughs> so but what are some of the other opportunities? Some of those go forms 
those people might be listening or watching. Yeah. And it may just be like a, a quick reminder. Hey, here's an opportunity. Yeah. What's happening? What is, what's the state of the world right now? That's a great question. Um, and it's, it's important. It's an important question because, and we're going to come full circle now back to the pandemic, mm. right? Because what we've realized and, you know, statistics speak to my heart. Numbers really can move people. But the reality is, is that the poorer, the poor got poorer mm. because of the pandemic. And so basically the poorest parts of the world are within the 1040 window, which is also the most unreached right. parts of the world. They are um, really needy right now. Hmm. Phys like physically yeah. physically needy um you know the daily wage earners during the pandemic that couldn't leave their home to go to work right. then no longer got paid couldn't pay for food or medical or things i mean and you know people face that in america too so i don't want to be like painting this grim picture but there is a reality that they didn't have the same kind of relief that was offered or um yeah the same kind of systems yeah place. and you're just showing all the other outs that yeah. people could go out to. Right. That's know. right. So I think that one mistake that people make is that they don't have like what it takes to be a missionary. Mm. So it's like, well, they're you know, like doctors or missionaries or, or pastors or maybe counselors or things like that. But one of the things that is so exciting um, and especially when you're talking about secure fields, um, which is what I in particular um, do the mobilization for, is that there's a lot of creative things going on. There's a lot of creative access, businesses, um, entrepreneurial kinds right. of things. You know, a lot of people assume that there has to be like this amazing giftedness that puts yeah. them there. Whereas, yeah. you know, sometimes we just need, we need hands and feet Mm -hmm. um, to come and help and work alongside people. Um, you know, we've got cafes all around the world that are doing amazing things, to, uh, bringing people, um, I mean, specifically women, sometimes children, out of the sex trade, right? And teaching them a skill by, you know, teaching them how to, to bake, make pastries and then, you know, coffee. And so there's this whole thing where there's this platform, but we still need people to help run the coffee shops right. too. Like there's, right. an, there's an element of, of both. You know, you're doing discipleship, but you're also sweeping a floor. So I think that um, that's one thing that I would say is really important to remember um, that, you know, if, if you feel led in your heart to go to the nations, um, there's a place for you. Yeah. And it's, it's funny because we do have this, this expectation. Uh, I remember when I, when I went on the field, I had that very expectation that it was, that it was, uh, just kind of the next level in my professional super Christian development. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's like, no, that is, it that's not keeps, how this works. It keeps so many people from stepping out and being light in places that really just need transformative lives living among them. Like it's, yeah, it's pretty amazing. Um, yeah. what your influence as just a believer, you know, to think about some of these places, like I used to think about this where I lived that, you know, you go into a neighborhood and be like, I wonder if the name, if anyone has ever prayed in the name of Jesus on this street before we're going to do it right now. A absolutely. You know, we're going to, we're going to pray in the name of Jesus and then we won't have to wonder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thinking, uh, thinking about going into the out yeah. is, is. For me, living in suburban Philadelphia, my son's on a soccer team. Has anyone ever prayed for those people mm. on that soccer team? Yeah. Has anyone ever prayed for the the people in my my daughter's gymnastics coach? Yeah, sure. You know, and what priestly role that functions and, and what the Lord chooses to do with that yeah. is not up to me. All I, all I see is, here's an opportunity. I'm in someone's life. Uh-huh. They're in my life. Yeah. Well, I'm going to offer them up, up to Jesus, and I'm going to say, you know, let your kingdom come here. Yeah. And, and in His authority, uh -huh. He chooses to do whatever it is that He wants to do with it. But if, if I'm not trying to go out of myself, yeah, then I'm missing out. Yeah. On participating. Yeah. And the going out, I mean, the going out, the action, like, like you just said, like in your example of like praying for people, like what is, what happens to your heart when you start praying for people? 
Well, you start loving those people. Right. You know, like God, God changes you by his spirit. He changes the way you see people when you, when you start inviting him. Because that's what we're doing, right? We're inviting him in right. to this relationship when we start praying. Like, that's what it is. Yep. And so you're like, oh, yeah. Oh, I'm not just, you're not just looking at the soccer team like Jim sees the soccer team. Now you're looking at the soccer team like God sees the soccer team. And that's going to change your view of the soccer team. Right. right? And right. it's going to give you, hopefully, like a level of compassion and and heart to actually now move even from prayer to like doing something. Yeah. Like moving towards something, like inviting somebody out for a beer or, or you know, going and, and you know, uh, hosting the party at your house. Or, right. You know, right. like that there's like there's all of a sudden you're doing things that, that maybe you wouldn't have even crossed your mind. And, and it's funny because those little things, they do take courage. They do take faith. Absolutely. You know? It would be easy to stay in, um, but not very fun. Yeah. And that could be the extrovert in me saying that. But I think just in general, like at this point in time, God has been so good and so gracious to us that we see the benefits of going into the out. Not just for the soccer team or for, you know, the nations, but what going into the out does to us. Absolutely. Like this is not his economy is not limited. Like so he called, like, one of the things that I would say is, like, he called us to the field, right? And I was like, oh, yeah, we're going to the field. We're going to do great things for the kingdom. You know, this is going to be awesome, uh -huh, you know? Uh -huh. And then I was like, I had no idea that he was taking me there for that place and those people to, to change me. You. And he changed yeah. me. And then now I'm here, and I'm, like, in, in a place that's familiar yet not. Right. And I am, and, and it thinks it's familiar with me, but it's not because I'm not the same person that I was when, you know, when I left to go to the mission field. And now I'm here and there's a whole new interaction that needs to take place. There's yeah. a whole new mobilization that needs to happen in my life. Yeah. You know, back back on the ground. All the so. while, Jesus' authority remains epic. Yes. And the invitation to participate that is constant and joyful. Oh, you know, that's this, why I think that you're so good at this. Oh, well, I appreciate your, your kind to say that. And yeah, I just, I think that, you know, the epic authority, uh, just thinking about him returning, it's not going to be on a donkey. Hmm. Right. That there is an element of awe and wonder and power that's going to be displayed, but even still, like, and then it, just to, to sit, just like sitting face to face with him at the same time, mm -hmm. that there's this, this epicness and then this personalness about him that he is on the field with me on the court with me however we want to say it yeah um it's beautiful yeah my my pastoral mentor uh used to imagine jesus grabbing him by the temples grabbing him by uh -huh. pulling him yep nose to nose forehead to forehead uh -huh. and that kind of intimacy yeah where it's like we're in this together oh yeah don't forget yeah. all authority has been given to me oh. but we're in this together yeah okay yeah are you ready to go do something okay. crazy with me <laughs> the world thinks this is crazy but you're with me yeah yeah let's go yeah yeah, yeah. oh for sure yeah anyway that's great i feel like maybe you should give one last pitch to all those folks who filled out a go form. <laughs> What's the nudge? You don't have to look directly into the camera like a like a Uncle Sam kind of. Uh, we want you. you. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, that. Yeah, no, no, it's no. Uh, it's no because Jesus doesn't do that. No. It's it's he grabs you by by the head <laughs> and he pulls you forehead to forehead. Yeah, yeah. And he goes right. I want you to come with me here. Yeah. Wherever it is. I think the encouragement would be like, hey, if there was a rumble, hmm. if there was something that was happening during the pandemic, during that season that caused you to, to ask some what if kinds of questions, and if you stopped asking those questions, why? Hmm. And maybe start taking a look at, did you become distracted or did you get some closure on them? Like, maybe you got an answer, and that's okay. Like, what if we moved to, you know, Europe and started working with immigrants? Like, what would that look like? Yeah. Is that a possibility? And maybe something happened or came along that was like, well, no, actually not right now. 
But if you didn't get that kind of closure and it just mm. got pushed or squeezed out, I would say stand firm. Um, re repent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Turn, turn around and go back to that question. Um, don't ignore it because I believe that God is is still working and moving in the hearts of people. I don't think we even can begin to know the ramifications of what that season, like the global pandemic, um, the ramifications of that for for individuals and for the church, for the for the world. Yeah, I mean they're big, uh, and so that's I think that's that's would be my exhortation would be, you know, turn back to that what if and make sure it's really resolved. And if it's not, you know, call me. <laughs> Yeah, that's so good. The Lord bless you in your mobilizing. Oh, thank you it. so much, Jim. Thank you so much for it. coming by. Yeah, yeah, it's good to talk. <laughs> All right, Chat GPT. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're going to do a Gen Z 28, 18 through 20. Did I do it? Yo, fam, listen up. Jesus came through with some fire words before he bounced <laughs> up to heaven. He said, I got mad clout in heaven and on earth. Where, where am I? Go and make homies. Uh, so I'm passing the torch to y'all. Go and make homies from all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teach them to keep it keep it a hundred. I don't know what that one is. Hi. My daughter needs to teach me that one. I don't know that one. Keep it a hundred with everything I've taught you. And don't even trip, because I'll be with you every step of the way, even if you can't see me. So go out there, spread love and truth, and let's change the game together. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's glorious. No cap. <laughs> okay. Okay. Look, whatever translation you use for the Great Commission, it hasn't changed. Jesus' call for us to make disciples as we go out into the world is as real as ever, but Christ's authority over the entire endeavor is more, in, in Emily's words, epic than you realize. So if you felt the nudge from the Holy Spirit, don't ignore that. Follow it. And if that nudge leads you to explore all the incredible ways the Lord is moving in his kingdom, to explore all the ways you can participate with him in bringing his grace to the frayed edges of life, go to surge.org slash go and fill out that go form, maybe for the second time, and then lean into whatever God has for you. But if you're listening and you're saying, I have gone, I'm in the middle of the going and making disciples part of the Great Commission, and I'm exhausted. Well, if that describes you, then you're ready for Sonship Week. It's a week-long retreat designed to help you restore to you the joy of your salvation. Because going is not easy. Taking up your cross daily and following Jesus into the frayed edges of life requires gospel renewal. So I hope you'll join us this October at Park Road Presbyterian Church in Hollywood, Florida. Oh, by the way, Emily will be one of the speakers. And I know that you'll leave this retreat feeling liberated, spiritually renewed, and ready to go into the out once more. So for more information, go to surge.org slash renewal. And wherever you are on your journey, I hope your main takeaway is this really, really good news. Jesus has all authority. And when Jesus says that he's with you day after day after day, that's a promise from the one who holds all authority in heaven and on earth. The one who conquered death and invites you into his blessing. So receive this blessing as you go into the out. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to smile down on you. May the Lord be gracious to you and turn his bright eyes to you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, life everlasting. Amen.